Hi, where do I even start? Feel like for my friends, follower, and family, I owe you guys an update on what has been happening the past couple of months. I have messaged you one off, relaying the same information, and it's been a lot. <laughs> That's also very overwhelming. So I thought I just put it all here in one video so you're more up to date to my current situation and for those of you who are new here maybe you stumble on this video because you or your loved ones are going through um, adversity in your life whether it's like health issue cancer infertility maybe this video will give you a little comfort knowing that you are not alone and that's mainly the reason why I'm making this video is to share my journey I know that I look up video story post clinical trial to gain more knowledge and feel like i'm not going through it alone so i hope this video will do that for someone else the past three months has felt like it's been like a year i felt like i've lived a whole ass year a lot of things has happened it's slow but it's like fast and long at the same time february 1st was when i got my first seizure i was on a work trip in minnesota we were just about to go on to lunch this was the first time i've ever had a seizure my arms were like kind of twitching waving up in the air um i looked at my coworker and i just i see her i'm feeling weird and i have no control over my body i feel like i'm saying something but it's not producing words it's like just sound and then i start feeling like embarrassed like what am i doing why, why am i acting where i have no control over my body and then i pass out next thing i know i was in the ambulance the guy was shaking me there's an iv in my left arm barely opening my eyes he's like hey what's your name what's your age you know where you are by the way you have a seizure we're gonna bring you to the hospital i just remember my right side of my head hurting so much and i'm like oh please give me like some pain medication my head is hurting a lot and he's like oh i did and then i just i, I passed out and i must have passed out longer than like an hour and a half because by the time i woke and up slightly in some kind of emergency room i don't remember everything was like a blur some kind of doctor telling me hey you went through a ct scan and an mri scan we found a like an eight centimeter mask of tumor on the right side of your brain and it's really big it's suppressing your right frontal lobe um we have to get surgery you have to go through brain surgery to remove the tumor and i was like what the fuck brain surgery what wait I, I'm, I'm so drugged, I, I'm kind of like, okay, let's do it, whatever. This day was the day I'm supposed to fly back home to Chicago after the work trip. So I'm, I'm guessing I'm gonna stay here. I fell asleep again. I was just like, okay, cool, and then I fell asleep. That was probably like 4 p.m. I woke up again. And this time it was around maybe 8 p.m. ish. Same day, you know, I got a phone call from my mom telling me the sister, boyfriend, brother are driving here because it will be faster to drive from Chicago to Minnesota, faster than flying that night. I'm in discussions with like family and I'm like now realizing and processing what the hell is going on. Like, wow, I had a seizure, never had a seizure before, and now I need brain surgery. It's like, what? So I'm, I'm right now, I'm just in like doing mode. Okay who's the best surgeon i was like texting my cousins and like do i i don't want to get operated in minnesota can i be home like i literally don't want to be here it's cold as hell during that time i swear to god it was like negative like 14 degrees or something i'm still on drug i can't really think straight i was scheduled for um a brain surgery like 11 a.m the next day and i was like oh shit like what the fuck i don't want to get operated can i just go home so i t asked to talk to the doctor if possible i can get operated back in chicago and then that ended up happening she referred me to another doctor at rush hospital which is the number four neurosurgeon hospital in the whole united States. and i have like the freaking best surgeon dr burn he is like the top surgeon he's a chief like he teaches but he still practice like i'm just so blessed 
so blessed and so thankful he literally saved my life and i when i looked him up it's a no-brainer that he's gonna be my doctor i'm in good hands my neurosurgeon doctor that referred me to him was saying great things about him she was like fangirl with him so i'm like you know what i trust him with all my life so um i was clear to fly back home the same day I was scheduled to see him like the next day february 6th so, like about five days later that was the day of my surgery and like i don't know if you can tell it's like i'll show you later but there's like a scar my hair is like kind of growing back the hair that was shaved for the surgical line has not like fully grown back this is just like the additional hair that was shaven off that were not like fully affected by the surgery and my hair grows back fast so like that's why these are like just so long February 6th, I got my surgery. The day before that, I honestly was on a lot of drugs. Um, I don't really remember much. All I remember was, you know, if something happens, if I die, obviously there's like gonna be complications for brain surgery. I have never had any surgery in my entire fucking life. Uh, I've never broken a bone, never had any invasive surgery like that. The only thing I've done is like, I got LASIK. And for me to go from that to brain surgery, I don't even know what the hell brain surgery is. And I didn't even look it up because I'm like, I don't even wanna know. The day before, I made sure my beneficiary was assigned. And I'm like, you know, no one reads my journal. I was so drugged, I was not that scared, to be honest with you. You're gonna be great, okay? You're gonna have a successful surgery tomorrow. Say it. It's gonna be amazing. It will, and you're gonna have a short recovery, no complications. I wasn't that scared. Um, so I went in, did the thing, out, and I was functioning. I was full, I was like super numb, but maybe I'll share that story in a separate video. The most painful part for me, I think, is like right after surgery. My head was like hurting a lot, but then that was it. That's when they gave me extreme painkiller drugs. That's very addictive. Um, other than that, like the most painful part was removing the staples. That was so painful. I had staples in my freaking scalp. Like, can you believe that? staple in my freaking scalp that was the most most painful i swear now i don't know if you can see it's it's starting from here all the way here somewhere i don't know if you can see my hair is covering really well then after the surgery date i was not able to lift anything heavy over five ten pounds or something like that i'm not push pull i can't drive for six months by the way yeah i can't drive for six months i came in with a seizure so i i have to be on seizure pills for one or two years and they want to make sure i don't get another seizure because you know the brain has neurons that used to connect through my tumor and now my tumor is not there it needs to readjust itself that's the hardest thing because i actually love to drive i sit in the car sometimes driving to places just to feel good so um that's been hard then i got my staple removed like about a week and a half later I need a break let me know okay, okay. does it like does it hurt quite? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the longest wait was waiting for my pathology results i got that pathology result on march 2nd that was like almost a whole one month later um that was hard so that day changed my life forever because i was then diagnosed with astrocytoma grade 2.5 so it's like two to three um with an idh mutation which is good because that means it grows slow but that also means i have cancer so they think I'm like between two to three. I got another second opinion. He thinks it's like closer to two than a three. And I like, um, there's a big difference between a two and a three, okay? Honestly, I don't know. I'm, I, what do I think about the news? I'm still in shock. I'm still in denial. There are like really dark nights and days where I'm just like, I just break down because I'm like, what the fuck is happening do i really have this i do i have this this is really happening i just take it one day at a time the doctor tells me to take it one day at a time and that's what i do and i focus on just you know i cope by just doing things and there has been a lot of things that's happening like i schedule meetings i go to appointments i write down questions to ask the doctor because after surgery my brain is like in a fog i'm like i'm tired i nap all the time yeah it's just it's weird i focus on like okay what do we do next what do i do next what's next step so i keep myself busy that way i go to so many appointments so the prognosis for my cancer type that means how long they usually live is about 10 to 15 years and but i have the idh mutation i may live a little bit 
longer than that who knows treated or untreated so treated meaning i have to go through radiation for six weeks and then one year of chemotherapy There's another route, watch for waiting. That means I just watch and see if it grows and once it like grows, then I can treat it then and then this type of tumor always comes back and it might mutate into a different grade. The results of treating it now or treating it later, the prognosis is still the same. It's still like 10 to 15 year, year or more. I think more, I'm hopeful it's more. I'm manifesting more years in order to take preventative measures. I decided to freeze my eggs because when you go through chemo as a woman you are born with a certain amount of eggs and that's all you will have forever you have two big pouch of eggs that you're born with a couple eggs come out in a little pouch and then one grows goes into your uterus and it gets fertilized or not then it like period comes out when you go through chemotherapy the eggs that comes outside to the smaller pouch that gets destroyed because anything that's growing will get destroyed by chemo and since i'm so young i'm 30 years old i decided you know i'm gonna preserve my eggs if i have to go through chemo and all of that i have some good eggs some eggs reserved so i can still have kids in the future april 3rd that's when i started my first ivf cycle of egg freezing during this whole process i did a lot of like blood tests um check up my amh level which is like how fertile you are how many eggs reserve you have and all types of like math that I, I would not be able to explain to you right now um it's very low it should be like at a level of two to three but mine is like 2.5 anything below one is concerning that's already like red flag at this point am i surprised that I start finding out more things I should be concerned about. No, at this point, I'm not shocked with anything anymore. So I did the IVF cycle. Um, it was a lot. There was a lot of shots in the stomach, like two shots for one week, three shots. Like it was a lot. Blood work and almost, almost every other day towards the end of the cycle for a whole week. But yeah, I end up freezing five eggs. Initially, they saw that I had nine follicles. I was able to retrieve six eggs and only five were matured and frozen. For reference, you need about 12 to 14 eggs, good frozen eggs, for you to in the future have a possibility to create one child. That's like a good probability to like have, right? So five is very little. So I went into another cycle on may 6th this time i decided to do embryo freezing instead because embryo freezing has a higher chance of survival through thawing that's why i decided to go this route seeing that i i don't have many eggs so i'm doing the embryo one instead i just recently finished the embryo retrieval just fyi like every ivf cycle you get like about two weeks break to you know heal from the retrieval and everything like that it's not that invasive of a surgery or a procedure they kind of like a needle where they put yeah uh, yeah whatever you, you guys can look into that so for my embryo freezing they saw 11 follicles nine eggs were retrieved on my retrieval date five were matured and were injected with the sperm and only three of the five egg took the sperm and grew to a blastosis i think that's what it's called and were able to get biopsy so i did that biopsy route where i checked to see if the chromosomes are good the gender and all that so very exciting i'm still waiting for the biopsy to come back it's gonna be about like seven to 15 days or something like that but i'm excited hopefully um they're all healthy and good and i can freeze them i'm taking a break from this i'm going through a lot hot. i'm not doing another cycle for a while i just want to get back into shape and like just finally work out a little bit i have not been able to run or jog or do anything intensive because i've just been doing one procedure after the other and this and that and all types of things i've gained about 15 pounds i'm not kidding you 15 pounds ever since my surgery till now ivf makes you gain weight because there's a lot of injections hormones pills i've taken a lot of pills supplements like i'm popping pills like there is no tomorrow there are so many pills a couple days after my egg retrieval i got freaking covid my boyfriend i think he got covid from the grocery stores or something and then 
I got COVID. So um, as of yesterday, I was positive for COVID. Yesterday or two days ago, I think. I'm, I'm starting to feel better today. Yep, just my luck. Now I'm healing from COVID. Uh, it's like, uh, can I just be over? I was, I was just excited to heal from the whole egg retrieval IVF process, but then I got COVID. Now I have to heal from COVID, whatever. And I'm still healing from my brain surgery as well. There's only like one line that they did the cut and they kind of like pulled the scalp you know back or open and then they cut like a big piece of skull removed it so like i feel weirdness and numbness around the area where the skull has been removed and i can feel some screws in my head um it's weird it's weird but yeah i'm still healing from that i'm i have good days i have bad days um some days i have a lot of energy and some days i'm very tired but overall i'm you know looking forward to just moving forward this has been one of the most fucked up year not only for me but like for my families as well i can't really share but anything bad has come to reveal itself this year like for example like my tumor I've always had it. The doctor thinks it's been growing for like years now, but obviously it's, it's so big, it came to show itself this year. And um, yeah, it's just like a lot of other like messed up shit that happened in my family, like one thing after another. At this point, I just hope that we will have the resilience and the strength to move forward. Through all of this unfortunate event, there are silver linings. I still feel like I've been extremely lucky because it could have been way worse. Honestly, this has been a wake up call for me to not take life for granted relationships and the good things that you have in your life. Um, and it just sucks that, you know, you have to go through these type of misfortunate event for you to wake up or make change but it usually is that way. It's better that this has happened to me now than later. I like, I didn't know that my AMH fertility level was so low. I was dragging my feet on just everything and all I was doing is focusing on work, stressing on work and who knows what else I was freaking doing or thinking about. But also that was because of the tumor. So maybe I give you a little, um, some of the symptoms that I've received from the tumor um, leading up to the seizure. So I think that's important and maybe even include it in a separate video so I can like help other people spread more awareness about this. I know brain tumor, no, brain tumor is not rare. Brain cancer is rare, but a lot of people have brain tumor that can be benign and there are can be symptoms that you might be able to pick up if you are aware. Oh, by the way, I did schedule for an MRI scan that day that I got my brain surgery because I've been getting headaches, pressure headaches, but I got denied from my insurance. Like, because a headache was not good enough reason for me to get an MRI scan. I know. Okay, some of the symptoms I've experienced were um, I've been getting pressure headaches. Like it's like that feeling when you get up from watching TV for really long. It's like Ugh, like that feeling for like two months every day. And then towards like a couple weeks leading up to my seizure, every time I'll have that pressure headache, like I'll walk to work and then my legs would like get weak and then my hearing would like enhance. I swear, I was it's like I was having superpowers. Like I was hearing my footsteps really loudly and all the noises were enhanced. It was weird. So I knew that I needed to talk to somebody. A couple weeks even leading up to that, I was very fatigued. I was so tired. I didn't notice because I was just thinking, I'm 30, I'm old now. So I just get tired and work is stressful. So I'm tired. I was like, way more tired than usual and my siblings and my boyfriend have taken notice i just would be like resting the whole day in order to like do an attend one event i don't have as much energy now because i'm recovering but i definitely know i have more energy now than before your right frontal lobe stores like your cognitive memories function of all the left side of your body your attention span oh i was having a really hard time focusing at work that was not even for my recent job it was for the job before i would like down so much coffee and i would just be so frustrated because i'm just i just keep thinking oh i'm so tired i can't focus like why i'm so tired yeah so those are like the major symptoms i would say i was really really freaking tired so i want to end on a more positive note by sharing my blessings throughout this whole situation and counting your blessing as what has gotten me through every single day. I swear, I, I, go, I wake up and I go to sleep thinking about what I'm grateful for and I've done this before my diagnosis but now even more so than ever when I get 
down into a dark place i just start thinking about the blessings and i'm going to share some with you and hopefully you can reflect on some of the blessings that you have in your daily life so just looking back i'm lucky that when i had my seizure i had people around i could have been in my hotel room by myself and i would have been there for who know how long i would have been dead so i'm just lucky my co-workers were around they had a guy who knew how like exactly what to do lucky that i have a job and insurance i started my new job november of last year so literally three months before this whole thing happened and before that i didn't have a job i shift career i moved into another industry so like a whole other topic but blessings you know brain surge she would have cost me like thousands i'm so lucky for that um i'm lucky to have the best top surgeon he's amazing he honestly saved my life thank you dr burn i love you i can honestly can't express how like thankful i am for you i'm happy i'm grateful to survive the surgery i mean it's brain surgery it could have gone really bad so i'm happy to be alive i'm happy i have my memories i'm happy i'm functioning and i've taken like a cognitive test i've ranked average normal passing on all levels except like what is it like math like the mental math and the do uh, the doctor was like but have you ever been good at like mental math and i'm like no i've never really been good at math so <laughs> that's just normal i would have got a bad score in that anyway so so i'm lucky i'm here i'm functioning i'm talking to you guys i'm making a video i'm happy to be alive all the timings i swear aligns where it's supposed to be it's like divine timing it's I, i've just been a very lucky person in general all my life and this i know my diagnosis is like shitty but like it reaffirms how lucky and fortunate i am as a whole because my lease from my chicago downtown apartment was up january mid january i moved home already two weeks before this whole thing happened i'm here with my family i don't have to pay rent i can't drive so i have someone to take care of me think fucking god i'm so grateful i'm so grateful how timing has aligned like that i'm so fortunate to have the support of my friends and family i have to give a special shout out to adam my boyfriend who has been my rock and i mean everyone has been supportive of me but i just want to give him a special shout out because i'm very impressed how strong he's been throughout this whole process with me i don't think i could have gone through it without him he literally moved into my house he slept on an air bed for like about two months downstairs and drove me to all my appointments it was early morning late night it was a lot so thank you adam i love you i don't really like to talk about my personal relationships a lot because i like to just like keep them close and private close to my heart anything special to me i just like to keep them more on the private side but um i just thought you know i share a little bit more because i do appreciate like the people that are in my life I'm on social media so i try to be respectful of people's privacy too going through something like this is really a blessing because you kind of realize like who's really there for you it just reaffirms how strong i am every day there's new things happening to me and i just continue to strive forward i'm really resilient and i think i will get through this i will manifest into being tumor cancer free the biggest change in my life and for everyone that's involved in my life from now on is having to deal with uncertainties because i'll never know when and how fast the tumor is going to develop i will continue to get mris every like four ish so month if needed i will need to go into treatments at any time so i try to plan out my life as i would live a normal life like anyone else would i will have to keep in mind that it's no longer the same and I have to be ready for anything if something shows up concerning on my MRI. Yeah, like my doctor said, this is the type of tumor that will always comes back. My hope is just grows like really slow or just never fucking grows ever again. Just like chill and stay where you are. And I'm hopeful that there's gonna be, you know, new treatment with less side effects in the future. An advocate for just spreading more awareness on this. So then hopefully there's more funding towards brain cancer and brain cancer treatment. I will probably link the link down below the foundation that I support and donate to to help with clinical trial and research and support for patients and family care. Oh, and one thing I did was I completed a 5K walk for the Brain Cancer Association. It was like a last minute thing, but I'm so proud that I did a 5k walk. I think this is after my first egg retrieval a couple days before my second cycle. That was an accomplishment. I've never knew I could walk that much. Life is short. Um, I realize people say it all the time, don't really register 
until it registers. You know, you think you'll live on forever, but you can literally die tomorrow. I have 10 to 50 years and I hopefully make better decisions and more mindful decisions to live my life how I want to, a happier, healthier life, knowing life is not forever. Well, on that note, I wish you guys a lot of happiness, a lot of health, a lot of wealth, a lot of prosperity. I'll keep you guys posted on my situation. I will make new videos because I bought myself a bag and I'm very excited to make that video. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Mm.